Hello there everyone, my name is Crazy Caleb, and today we're back with some more Contain modded module tutorials. And today actually is my 400th tutorial, and I want to say thank you guys for being here for the entire time. And today, with my 400th tutorial, I'm going to I'm going to be taking a look at Not Kanji. So this is the way the module looks, and this is actually going to be another one of the Not Modded module series. However, this module is actually uh, is actually completely uh, made by a completely different user, and this is going to be a, a, a T Chan or a Temple in this case. So that's going to be right here if I can get it up correctly. Not Kanji, yeah, by T Chan. Uh, it is a great module. I quite 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 frankly enjoyed a lot. And the way that you're able to distinct Kanji from not Kanji is immediately right off the top, as you can see here. Uh, it looks very similar to the original Kanji module. And for those of you who haven't seen that tutorial, I would advise you to watch it because it's made by me. But also because of the fact that it is a great module. Uh, not Kanji is also a great module, but it is definitely a lot trickier than the original Kanji. You thought describing the module uh, itself just to find a matching symbol was hard? Well, this module takes that a little bit to the next level. But the way that you're able to distinct not Kanji and Kanji itself is if we take a look at this top little message up here, it is guaranteed to be exactly six individual characters. It is guaranteed to be uh, six on the first stage, whereas for Kanji, Kanji has the possibility of being um, a couple different things. It has the possibility of being going up to a maximum of three, I believe. That's the only one that pops up for a three. Yep. Um, so yeah, this is going to be the key difference. This top display will be uh, displaying the encrypted message in Kanji, which we'll have to first decrypt, and then we're going to have to input a series of um, a series of different uh, button buttons that we press here. But it is going to be one stage, so that's nice that we have to worry about that. Um, so let's get right into what we exa what exactly we have to do, and it's going to be the steps of helping this module. Now, this module is very similar to how we do a lot of cipher modules. However, it is a not modded module, so it's a little bit different. So. Um, if the, if the hiragana in the display it has less than six characters, you are looking at a different module. That's how you just think uh, not kanji from kanji. So for the first step here, all we simply need to do is we actually need to get our letters at the top of the display, which is going to be shown down here in each of the different uh, hiragana. And these ones that are marked in gray are symbols that will, um, they uh, grayed out hiragana will not show up on this module. That means that they are used in some form of the alphabet. However, they are not going to be showing uh, up in this case uh, because they are going to be... Um, they're just not going to be used. So uh, each of these uh, each of these hiragana that are that are going to be next to a letter is what these letters are going to correspond to. So in this case, this first one right here, uh, I'm not going to bother describing it because I hopefully by now the module kanji itself has been released enough. The symbols are the symbols are very similar to um, the original messages. However, uh, there might be some that you might not have seen yet. There are definitely some different ones that exist. So keep that in mind. But this first one here is going to be an alpha. So it's going to be in this cell. It shares, this, it, shares it with an alpha. So that means that this first part of the uh, encrypted message is going to be an alpha. And then we're going to be using that for later. But this is all you're essentially doing for this step is you're trying to decrypt each of these six individual symbols here. Now, there is one other thing I would like to mention here is that there is the possibility of there being a hash, which will come in much, much later. And in this case, we actually have one of the hashes in that third position, as you can see here, it's that hotel. So um, that's going to be one of the other case, that's going to be one of the other symbols that is going to be present because of the fact that we're going to be using this later on. And you'll see why that's important. So let's get back into this. So uh, we don't, uh, let's take a look at the second symbol here. This is going to be a, if I can find it, uh, it's going to be, If I can find it, <laughs> that would be nice. Um, there it is, Kila. So Kila is going to be our second message right there. I totally was overlooking that several different times. We've determined that this hotel is going to be representing a hash, so we're going to be marking that as our third symbol. Then next up, we have uh, sort of like a uniform or like a nose in a way. I kind of describe this one. Uh, this one is going to be a Bravo right here. Uh, okay. The next step, we have uh, like a little bit of a Lima or like a backwards Juliet. That's going to be a Charlie. And then for our last one here, we haven't had this one before. Uh, this is going to be a, uh, a whiskey. Whiskey right there. Okay. And now let's take a look and let's see what we need to do. Now, this is this part is going to be pretty much the bulk of the module here. These, the step two and three are what we're going to be really focusing on here. Step one's easy. That's, that's just getting the hiragana's decrypted into an actual form of alphabetical letters in this case. So now... 
what we're going to be doing with this part is we're going to be doing the cube cipher. This is going to be very, very important. And it, it actually is just a bit one giant big step. It is broken up into two parts, though, as you can see, step 2.1 and step 2.2. Uh, that's pretty much what you're going to be mainly focusing on. And finally, step three is just simply going to be submitting it into the module. So this is the bulk of the work that we're going to be doing, and it's going to be based off of this section right here. So let's get right into this. So now what our goal is, is our goal is we're going to be creating uh, two 3x3x3 three by three by three matrices of letters and a hashtag, and we're going to be naming them cube A and cube B. Now, we actually don't even really need to do any sort of... Um, technical ge geometry with how you do the cubes. It's actually not that bad, and I'm going to make this really, really simple on you. And I'm actually not going to create the placeholders of the 3x3 three three matrices yet, 3x3x3, um, three three three, uh, and I'm not going to worry about that quite yet, because what we need to do is we need to first determine our keys. We need to create those cubes, but, they're, but we're going to have to create um, a series of uh, different key, uh, keys that we have to note down. Um, so let's figure this out. So we're going to be figuring out first off for a um, for a couple of key words that we're going to be getting. These are going to be based off the module uh, the modules buttons that we actually have present here. This is where this whole aspect is going to come into play here, because as we can see, if we scroll down here, each of these have different meanings of words, and they also have a series of different strokes, which we'll get into later. That is going to be very important. So. That's all we really need. Uh, so now what we want to do is we want to start describing these symbols, but we need to do it in a very particular order. Uh, what's going to happen here is that two of these symbols are going to be used for um, whether we, um, for, two of them are going to be used for our keywords for, for both cube A and cube B respectively. And the other two buttons are going to be used to determine whether we, um, whether we append the alphabet uh, after the keyword or whether we prepend the alphabet before the keyword. That's going to be what we're going to do here. So. Um, we'll get into that in just a second, but for right now, let's figure out what our cube A and cube B uh, keywords are going to be. And first things first, let's also actually write down our alphabet to help us um, get this in here. And the way that this alphabet actually works is it's a, no it's a normal standard alphabet. However, what we want to do here is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, O, T, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. After we've done this, we are going to add the hashtag to the name of this right there. That's what we're going to be doing with this module, because the hashtag is going to be important. Make sure you do not forget about that. It should be a perfect 3x3x3 um, three by three by three square, doing that three times. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing here. So now I'm going to copy and paste this again, because it's going to be using the, exa it's going to be using the exact same thing for cube B. So we, all we simply need is two of these guys right here. And now let's get into what we exactly we need to do and, you, and see which kanji that we're going to be using for each of these cubes, respectively. So if the sum of the serial number digits is odd, some of the digits in the serial number is on. Let's take a look. And our serial number, by the way, is going to be a uh, a four delta four uh, Zulu alpha and two. So now let's sum up our total digits. And if we're looking for it to be odd, so let's take a look. So we pop out our handy dandy calculator here. So it's going to be uh, the digits are going to be a four plus a four plus a two. And as you can already see, none of those actually are odd at all. So this is going to result in an even digit. Um, so this, uh, they total up to an even digit. So instead of using the top left button, we're going to be using the top right button. And now what's going to happen here is we're going to go down to the bottom here. And based off of this symbol that we have here on the top right button, uh, which in this case corresponds to love, we're going to be noting this guy down and we're going to be using this for cube A. So love is going to be used for cube A. And let's see what else we're going to be using for uh, cube B. Let's figure this out. So now, for QB, uh, if the sum of the A1Z26 values of all letters in the serial number is even, even instead of odd in this case, use the kanji of the bottom left button, otherwise the bottom right button. So now, let's sum up all of our values uh, of all of our letters in the serial number. So we have a uh, 4 plus a 26 for the delta and the Zulu respectively, plus an alpha being a 1. This results in an odd digit, uh, odd, no, odd total. So in this case, we're going to be using the bottom right button instead of the bottom left. So we're going to be using bottom right. And bottom right is going to be this guy right here. So bottom right is going to be uh, rain. So these are going to be our two keywords for um, both cube A and cube B respectively. Uh, love for cube A and rain for cube B. And what's going to be happening here is that we need to remove the duplicates uh, in each of these words because there is the possibility of there being duplicates, uh, duplicate letters in some of the words. For example, uh, you can have samurai. Uh, you would obviously get rid of the second A because of the fact that there are two A's in the actual keyword here. So we're simply going to be getting rid of any duplicates that we have. However, both of these are really short four letter words that all have unique letters. So that's perfect. So now uh, we're, going to, we're going to take the entire alphabet appended by hashtag and remove any letters included in the keyword as well. So we're going to remove the words of the letters of love for cube A. So let's do uh, O, L, V, and the E. Okay. And then for rain is going to be removed in key B. So we're going to do R, uh, A, 
I and N. Okay, perfect. Now, what we need to do is we need to figure out with the rest with the other two cubes that we did not use, we need to figure out whether we're gonna be uh we're gonna be putting the, the keyword in the front or in the back. That's gonna be the way we're gonna be doing this. So for each cube, if the if the kanji horizontally adjacent, or in this case, if we take a look at the module, the one that we did not use, uh, if the if the kanji that is horizontally adjacent is uh, used has more than seven strokes, append the alphabet after the keyword. Now, you know, if you're thinking, how do I count strokes exactly? Well, thankfully, the module actually does it for you, and it actually gives you this little number up in the top right here for each of the individual symbols that represent the amount of strokes that are in their characters. That's perfect. So now. Let's take a look. So we use the uh, the top right uh, the top top right button for the first one here. So we use U. So now the one that is horizontally adjacent from this guy is going to be the one to the left or right of it. In this case, that's going to be this guy right here. That's going to be a uh, a what in this case. Now, if the kanji horizontally adjacent of the word uh, to the uh, of the word the used kanji has more than seven strokes, in this case, this one has exactly seven. So this is not going to be true. Um, if it was if it was more than seven, we would append the alphabet after the keyword. Um, otherwise, we, we're going to be prepending the alphabet before the keyword. So in this case, uh, we're going to be prepending the alphabet before the keyword. So what this means is that the keyword is going to be placed in the back of it because we're going to be prepending or pl placing the alphabet before the actual keyword. Now we're going to do the same thing for uh, cube B. Uh, we're going to do the exact same thing we used. So we used the bottom right, which was rain down here. So we're going to be using the bottom left, one that is immediately left uh, or horizontally adjacent to it, and we're going to be taking a look at how many strokes this guy has. So now let's take a look here. This is going to be uh, morning. This one has 12. This one does indeed have more than seven strokes. So we're going to be appending the alphabet after the keyword. Appending is putting at the end. So we're going to be putting the keyword in the front, appending the alphabet afterwards. So this means that we figured out both of our cube ciphers. And now what we need to do is we need to essentially make this into our actual cubes now, because we've already determined how this is going to work. So now, let's take a look. The first layer of the cube consists of the first nine letters in a 3x3 three three grid. Let's do that. Perfect. That's not too bad. U, U, and U. And now, what we're going to do is going to be the second layer consists of the next nine letters, and the third layer consists of the last nine letters. That's all you simply need to do, is you're going to be forming um, three individual 3x3 three three grids. That's all you are doing. So now we're going to do U. Uh, they're going to be up here. Uh, by the way, this is kind of how I normally do it, is you put spaces like this, and then you simply just drag these three characters next. Bam, 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 and then this is how this is going to look. Just like that. First layer being A, B, C, D, um, A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, and then on to the second layer, and then the third layer, respectively. This is how this module works, and this is all you simply need to do. There is no 3D element that you need to do with the cubes. It's just simply um, putting them in a little bit of a fun, like a little bit like this. And it's actually quite nice. It actually is not too out of the module. So now let's do the exact same thing we do with QB. Both QB and QB are going to get the exact same treatment. Um, it's just that they might be they might be in a different order based off of the symbols that we have in the left and right that we did not use. Uh, so now let's take a look. Let's do the exact same thing with QB. And the reason why we have two cubes is going to be used in the second part of this uh, second part of this second step right here. And that's going to be the part of decrypting. So let's finish this guy right up here. So let's do this. And then finally, moving you up to the top. Okay, and now we have created both of our cubes that we needed to, placing the letters in the correct positions that they needed to be in. Note that I did not end up using the um, the placement. There was no real point of me um, creating a placement position for each of these individual letters uh, when I can just do stuff like this. It's much, much easier to do it this way, and I quite frankly advise doing it this way. But now, let's get into the part of actually getting our word. So now, if we take a look down at the bottom for the decrypting message here, there's going to be a series of different words of which we could potentially get right here. Uh, in this case, we have uh, Hizasi, Hiziri, Karate, kara uh, Karasi, and so on and so forth. And one of the things that we can see actually as well is many of the words actually are quite similar to one another. So that actually, we don't really need to decrypt all of these words as long as we get a good idea um, of which words we are looking at because of the, of the fact that we can cross off a lot of words here. So for example, if we were to take a look at Sakura and uh, Saka, Sakana and Sakura respectively, both of these immediately, if we happen to get the first letter, we would immediately know it's gonna be between one of these two if we did all of our work right, of course. Now. Instead of going to the second and third letter, there would be no point in me trying to do that. 
I would actually either go for the um, the fourth or fifth letter because both of those are different in both Sakana and Sakura, as we can see right here. And that would be able to give my, give me my word really quickly. Now, of course, there might be some bigger characters, like the, like the K's. K is a really big section. Um, uh, N is a little bit of a bigger section, but for the most part, two uh, there's two S's, there's two Y's, there's two H's, and then there's only three N's. But that's really it. Um, there is a six, five, excuse me, five of the K's. But for the most part, you're able to decrypt this message actually really easily. So let's get right into how exactly we do decrypt this module. So now, determine the decrypted message using the encrypted word from step one and cube A and cube B. The letters in the decrypted message can be found in QB using the following conditions. So, our result that we're going to get from each of the uh, each of these um, messages here, uh, each of these uh, conditions, is going to be found in specifically QB. So this like gives you an idea that we're going to be starting with QB A with everything that we do here. That's going to be right. So now let's take a look and let's see exactly what we're going to be doing here. So the first letter of the decrypted word is going to be these three conditions shares the same row as the first letter of the encrypted word in cube a, shares the same column as the second letter of the encrypted word in cube a, and shares the same layer as the third letter of the encrypted word in cube a. So as we can see, we're all com we're comparing all of these uh, with regards to positions in cube a. And essentially what's going to happen here is all of these are going to combine into um, our one of our letters that we're going to be looking for in cube a. Now, if we uh, mark these three with question marks, for example, we can use these as numbers and we can do a um, a row, a column, and a uh, layer, as we can see. Um, and what's going to be happening here is the way that layers are referred to uh, and, the word that, and the way that all these are referred to, uh, rows are going to be one, two, three from top to bottom. Uh, columns are going to be one, two, three from left to right. And layers are going to be one, two, three from left to right as well. That's the way that I do things. So now, let's get right into this. So now, the same row as the first letter of the encrypted word in cube A. The, the, the same row is going to be uh, the A that's going to be in row one. So it's going to be row one. Then kilo is going to be the, sa uh, it's going to be the same column number as the second letter. Uh, the second part is going to be the same column number as the second letter of the encrypted word. So we're going to take a look at kilo here. And we're going to find the column number that is in. In this case, that is in column one. Okay. So we have row one, column one, but we don't know which layer we're looking at quite yet. And in this case, we're going to be taking a look as, as the same layer as the number in the third letter of the encrypted word in QA. Now, our third our third letter is actually going to be a hashtag, which is indeed part of this. And in this case, this corresponds to layer three, as we can see in QA. So now, this means that this is going to be the third layer. So now, what we can do is we can essentially reverse process this. We can do third layer. And then row one and column one, which is going to be representing a Sierra. Ooh, okay, good. That's a good start for us so far, which means that we're actually already down to potentially two words if we did all of this correctly. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this module as we normally would. I'm gonna do I'm gonna go through all of these characters for the first time around just to show you how the, each of these individual examples work, just to make it a little bit easier. So now let's mark all of these guys with question marks again. But now, if we're to, if we're to take a look at the second letter of the encrypted word, let's say, let's read the, some of the conditions again. And as you can see, some of these things have actually swapped a little bit. The second letter of the decrypted word shares the same layer number as the first letter, uh, shares the same row number as the, as the second letter, and shares the same column as the third number. And as you can see, all of these guys end up swapping. Uh, and it's, that's all you're essentially going to be doing with this, is you're going to be reading each of the individual rules, making sure that you keep track of which word you're looking at, um, making sure that you keep track of which letter uh, you're in the, in the process of, of trying to decrypt, and also making sure that you read the conditions carefully because uh, layer, row, and column end up getting mixed up around a little bit here, as you can see. So now, same layer as the first letter. So that's going to be uh, right here. It's going to be the alpha. So same layer is going to be layer one, as we can see in QBA. So it's going to be marking us with a layer of one. The same row as the second letter, same row as the second letter is going to be a kilo. Same, uh, that's going to be a row of one. So we're going to be row of one right here. And then same column as the third letter. The column of the third letter being the hashtag here is going to be a, um, a column of two. So it's going to be layer one, row one, column two, which gives us an alpha. And that actually makes sense because of the fact that we have an SA for both of these characters. This means that we're doing something right here. So now let's do the exact same thing for the third letter and let's see what happens here. 
So the third letter is going to be sharing the same column as the first letter, so the same column as the first letter. Uh, alpha is a 1, 1, and a 1, so that's going to be a 1 in this case for a column. Next up, layer number from the second letter. That's going to be a kilo. This is going to be layer number 2 that it's in right now. And then same row as the third letter is going to be the hashtag. That's going to be in row 2. So now we're going to take a look at the uh, second layer in QB. The second row and the first column, that's going to be a kilo. And so far we get a kilo, S-A-K. This is making sense. But now, as we can see, we've reached the end of all of these conditions. So what exactly do we do for the fourth, fifth, and sixth character? Well, the fourth, fifth, and sixth character uh, will be essentially in place of the first, second, and third. So all of these will essentially be just three triplets. That's all you're doing in this case. <coughs> so all we're now going to be doing here is we're going to be going through the exact same steps that we just did before. Except in this case, we're only going to be focusing on the Bravo, Charlie, and Whiskey as if they were in place of the first, second, and third, respectively. So instead, instead of doing Alpha, Kilo, and Hashtag as these guys here, we're simply going to use Bravo as the first, Charlie as the second, and Whiskey as the third. That's going to be the way that this works. So now, let's just do it all over again. So um, uh, it's going to be sharing the same row as the first letter, which is Bravo. So share the same row is going to be a uh, one. It's going to be one. Then for column, column is going to be represented by the second letter. The second letter is going to be the Charlie, which in this case is going to be a three. And the layer number is going to be represented by the third letter, which is going to be a whiskey. That is in, going to be in layer three. So it's going to be a row one, column three in layer three. That is going to be a uniform. And at this point, with this uniform being given to us, we've already been able to determine that Sakura is going to be our answer. However, for the rest of this module, I'm going to, I'm going to continue making sure that we do get the R and the A. Uh, but in the next example, I will simply do um, the biggest process of elimination you'll ever see, and I'll explain to you how this can work, work, work a little bit better. Um, so now, uh, we're going to do the same thing for the second letter here. This, it's going to be the same layer as the first letter. That's going to be Bravo, which is going to be a 1. Uh, the same row as the second letter, that's going to be a Charlie. Same uh, same row is going to be a 1 again, okay? And then the same column as the third letter, uh, and that's going to be a Whiskey. Whiskey is going to be a 1. So now, layer 1, row 1, column 1, gives me a Romeo. That's good, okay? And then finally, for our last example here, uh, we have uh, same column as the first letter. That's going to be a Bravo. That's going to be a 2. Column is going to be 2. Uh, same layer as the second letter. That's going to be a Charlie. That's going to be a 1. And then the same row as the third letter. Uh, that's going to be a whiskey, same row, it's going to be a one. So we have a one, two, one. So layer one, uh, row one, column two, is going to be in alpha, and just like that, we get Sakura. So Sakura is going to be our decrypted message, and what we need to do is we need to use the table below to find the order of the buttons that need to be pressed in, and the buttons are in numbered in one, two, three, and four in order in reading order. So we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. And this order wants me to press 2, 1, 4, 3. Let's press 2, 1, 4, 3. And just like that is a solved module. So let's go over one more example. I'm going to go through this a little bit faster as this module is not that hard to do. It's really quite fun module to do and I quite frankly like it a lot. Uh, there is definitely a much, much bigger way to do it than the way that I showed you, obviously. Um, especially for that last step. You really do not need to get all the letters as long as you're able to determine um, the first letter and potentially the cases of which they have similar letters, but you need to figure out which one is going to be different. So let's keep that in mind. So now let's go through this a little bit faster. This module is not that bad, uh, and hopefully this does make sense. It's mainly just this cube cipher that you just need to create, and you need to figure out this little bit right here. Um, so let's keep that in mind. But let's do this again. So we have here. So for this first step, we only simply, we only simply need to get, uh, we need to do the hiragana up top. Uh, that's going to be a foxtrot. Then we have I've seen this one before, alpha. Then we have Romeo. Then we have what's this one? Where are you? Um, hmm. that's an X-ray. Yep. Uh, then we have, not Romeo, that's a, um, that's golf, yep. And then finally, we had this one before, and that's an alpha. Okay, so this is going to be our encrypted message we're going to be working through. So now, 
for Hubei, if the sum of the digits of the serial number is odd, let's take a look. Uh, so the sum of the digits is going to be a um, two odds and a zero, so that's going to make it even. So we already know that for a fact that that's going to be uh, an even number. So it's going to be us using the top right button. We're gonna be using the top right button as our first keyword for key A. Uh, and by the way, I need to copy down this message again. Yep, I think we had that in copy and paste, so that's going to be nice. Now let's find this top right button and let's see what word this gives us as our keyword. So this one is going to be where is it? That's going to be south. Okay, so south is going to be our first word that we're going to be using for cube A. Okay, and the next up for cube B, uh, let's take a look at the alphanumeric positions of each of these guys in the serial number. So that's going to be a nine. Um, Lima is going to be a twelve. It's going to be alpha is going to be a one. Okay. And then that's going to be uh, if the sum of the values is even. It is indeed even in this case. So this means that we're going to be using the bottom left button. Let's take a look at the bottom left button here. Go ahead, company. Okay. So we're going to be using the bottom left button, which I believe we actually had before. So um, the bottom left button was was morning. Yes, it was morning. Now, morning is going to be our keyword for uh, is going to be our keyword for key uh, for cube B. So morning. So now let's remove all of our duplicates in this case. So in this case, morning has uh, two ends. So we're going to get rid of you, and just like that, that's all we're going to be worrying about. And now let's remove each of the letters from each of these keywords from its respective cube. So let's do south. Let's get rid of S O U T and H. Okay. And for uh, morning, we're going to get rid of uh, M O R N I G. So. M N O R I G. Okay, and now let's take a look. So we need to take a look at the key at uh, the kanji that is horizontally adjacent to each of the ones that we've already used. So for our first one, we use south. So the one that we didn't use is going to be uh, this one right here, which I believe is mountain. It is indeed mountain. It has three strokes. So in this case, this means that for this kanji, uh, for this keyword. We're going to be uh, prepending the alphabet before the keyword. So we're going to be putting south at the end in this case. Okay. Now, uh, for the other one that we didn't use, uh, this actually is a very similar one right here. Um, this is going to be uh, one that we had beforehand. The, we, we're not going to be using morning. We're going to be using what in this case. And what is a seven. It's exactly seven, but it needs to be specifically more than seven stroke. So we're going to be placing U at the end. It south. So it's good. Let's do that. And both of them happen to match the amount of blanks. And now let's create the cubes that they want me to do. So let's do that. So it's going to be us putting this up real quick. So it's going to be one, two, up, up, one, and two. And then finally, for our last layer, we have one and two. There we go. And that's our first layer taken care of. Okay. Now it's the same thing for cube B. I hope this is all making sense. It's really not that hard to understand. Um, it's just a little bit easy to, mis uh, to misconceive what it actually is asking for. You might think that horizontally adjacent is referring to this actual grid here. It's not. Because of the fact that there is obviously more than one possibility of there being um, the two adjacents, in this case, left and right. That's not how this works. It's referring to specifically the kanji on the module. Keep that in mind. So. Uh, now, next up for the last layer here, Bob, move you up. That's not what I want to do. Move you up and move you up. Uh, do it right. If I can do it right, come on. There we go. And now we've created both of our cubes. So now what, what we need to do is I'm going to make this process really, really simple for decrypting. So let's take a look at our first letter. We need to immediately get our first letter because of the fact that that's going to cross off a lot of options for us. That's what we want here. So let's take a look. So for Foxtrot here, let's take a look at this first triplet. We have, in this case, um, it's going to be same row as the first letter, same column as the second letter, and same layer as the third. So let's do a um, um, little column layer as we did beforehand. And we're going to share the same row as the first letter of the encrypted word. So the row for Foxtrot is going to be in row two, as we can see here. Next up, same column as the second letter is going to be in alpha. Same column is going to be in alpha right there. That's going to be in column one. And the same layer that Romeo is in, Romeo is currently in the second layer right here. 
So that's going to be within uh, it's going to be within the second layer. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to set. We're going to go to layer two, which is going to be right here with this lima in it. We're going to go to row two and column one, and this is going to give me a Sierra. Nice. Okay, that's going to be actually really nice for us because we didn't get any of the K cases because of the fact that there are a lot of duplicates with them. Now, between these two S's, all we simply need to do is we need to simply get the fourth character or the fifth character in order to distinct them from one another. So let's actually do that. So let's simply ignore the rest of the, let's simply ignore the, third, uh, the second and the third character, and let's immediately go to the fourth and see if we can get a U or an A. And hopefully I didn't get the exact same word, but hopefully you get, uh, hopefully you get an idea of how this module actually works. So uh, let's treat these guys as placeholders as one, two, and three, as we did beforehand. So X-ray is going to be what we're looking for first. So it's going to be sharing the same row as the first letter of the encrypted word. That's going to be sharing the same row as X-ray. It's going to share the same row as X-ray, which is going to be row one for uh, in grid uh, in cube A. It's going to be a one in this case. Next up for the column, the column is going to be sharing the same letter as the second letter of the encrypted word, which is going to be golf. Golf is actually going to be a one as well. Now for which layer are we looking at here? It's going to be sharing the same layer as the third letter of the encrypted word, which is going to be an alpha that is going to be in layer one. So now if we take a look at um, layer one uh, and row one, column one, which is basically the top left, we result with an A. And what this means is that if we get the fourth letter being an alpha, this means that our answer is Sakana. So now what we're going to do in order to determine whether this is correct or not, we're going to be pressing three, two, four, and one. So let's do that. So there's three, two, four, one, and hopefully this will solve the module. And just like that is a solved module. As always, thank you guys for watching, and thank you for joining me on this contained journey. It's been a while, and I will continue going on with the uh, with these modules, uh, and it is it is a pleasure to do this for you guys. I really mean that from the bottom of my heart, and I want to thank you guys for sticking around for so long, whether you've only watched a couple of tutorials, or whether you've actually been relying on them quite a lot. It pleases me to know that I've actually helped this community a lot, and I want to thank you guys so much for that. So as always, stay crazy, stay cool, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye